Okay, hello, howdy hoopers. This is Shay Rippinger of Hip the Hoopla, and I am live from the Hip the Hoopla studios here, and uh, this will be on a recording as well. Welcome, thank you for watching. I really appreciate you being here, and uh, we're going to get into our three segments. So what the Hoop Love Y'all show is, is health, humor, and hooping. So hooping and health, uh, all kinds of good uh, recommendations and things like that. Uh, getting honest with you, getting real, uh, keeping it a hundred, as uh, the, the kids say, <laughs> and uh, and a lot of, and humor as well. Because yeah, twenty years as a cartoonist, it, it's hard not to do that, right? Okay, so not that I don't take my health seriously. So um, to open up today, I wanted to start out with a little laughter yoga exercise. Yeah, just to start and be grounded and to welcome you. So we're going to do the fountain laughter yoga exercise. And you may see some doggy cameos running back and forth. <laughs> That's how it rolls here. That's how we roll. So, and uh, this is my uh, fun mug for the day. Uh, boogies. Uh, that that was, uh, let's see here. It would, used to be a really cool place in Aspen, Colorado. It's no longer in existence, but it was really cool. And I brought my dog Aspen there to Aspen to that place and it was really cool so my mom wanted to get the little dog puppy a $50 leather jacket puppy that grows bigger yeah okay anyway okay so we're gonna get started with a little after yoga exercise I'm gonna keep an eye on the time here and try and respect and get in and out in our uh, proper time and uh, do things a little bit better and better better each time so all right take a nice deep breath in and we're gonna laugh, laugh, fountain laughter it out. <laughs> we'll laugh it in. Fountain laughter it out. <laughs> and one more time, laugh it in. Or inhale it in. <laughs> laugh it out. <laughs> and at the end of laughter yoga exercises, what we do is we clap nice and big. We go, very good, very good, yay. And we do that twice. Very good, very good, yay. And I knew that was gonna happen. So. <laughs> This is this little goofball, big goofball, is brown. The little goofball down there who's running around is uh, Callie. Okay, no bones right now because that's noisy. Hey, and you're going to pull all of the cameras down. Don't do that. Okay, don't do that. No bone for you right now. No, no, no. Okay. But you can do a hoop trick. Okay, for the humor portion, we'll try the hoop trick right now. Just to get a, just to keep it entertaining. Ready? Jump through. Yeah, jump through. Jump through. Can y'all see that? That is good. Good job, Brown. Darn, he's good. All right. I know. One more time. One more. Wow. Goodness gracious. That is a good one. All right. That, yes, you are big goofball. Big goofball. Big goofball. All right. All right, goofball. You need to go settle down now. Hey, sit, sit, sit. Okay. So, today's theme is love the skin you're in. So, why did I choose that topic for this week, you may ask? So, um, oh goodness. All right. I see what's going to have to happen here. Okay. Out you go. Out you go. Out you go. Everybody out. Everybody out. Okay. Thick, thick, thick. see if that works it may work for about two seconds okay anyway uh love the skin you're in sorry about the interruption so one of the reasons why i chose that subject is um i have this is a personal yeah hopefully not to tmi but um dealing with some candida issues and i've actually been dealing with this for uh, about three years now so um what that is it's an overgrowth of yeast in the intestines and it uh it, it manifests itself in a lot of ways so i've, I've since having this so you know an interesting thing is when you know better you do better and so when you learn about things you start researching them out and um, find out all kinds of interesting information about that so hey no so, ground no yeah stay out so Hopefully that won't be the last time of this. Anyway, um, 
So uh, one of the things that causes this, uh, the candida overgrowth, is an excess of sugar. So and sugar can uh, come in the form of a lot of different things. So for some people, a lot of people go gluten-free. Uh, I tried that when I first started um, noticing this stuff. So um, maybe I should back up the story a little bit. How I started noticing it is I had uh, what I thought were chigger bites. Chiggers are little insects that um, I had like little track marks of just itchiness and it was just really, really, really itchy on my skin. and. Uh, just little bumps and uh, it just got to so itchy that I just wanted, to, especially at night, um, which apparently as I've since learned, your immune system does different things where th this uh, progresses more at night and gets a little bit more intense. So in, in my case, a lot more intense. So the itchiness um, continued and it developed into a um, case of psoriasis and eczema. Um, I get the those two mixed up a little bit and I think mine have intertwined and kind of overlapped and, and done some different things. So I'd gone and I'd had somebody who said, oh, for sure it's eczema. And then another one said, for sure it's psoriasis and not the other one. And so, you know, even, even medical professionals had conflicting opinions. So, but the interesting thing was they didn't get to the root cause of it which um, when I went to regular dermatologist doctors. So they didn't address the issues, they just wanted to give me drugs, creams, um, and have an expensive um, appointment to figure stuff out. And I didn't want to be zap tested and, you know, needled and, you know, allergies and blah, blah, blah. So um, I did a different route. A friend of mine had recommended to me um, a place called The Green Herb, which is in, uh, I believe it's in Denver, Colorado and uh, just up the road from me a little bit and uh, so I went there and it's yeah, contrary to popular belief although cannabis is legal in Colorado the the place it's called the green herb um, it's also known by a different name too but anyway um, what it was recommended to me was as the green herb and it is um, herbal remedies so not cannabis it has nothing to do with cannabis this particular place does not so anyway uh, a neighbor had recommended it to me just out of the blue didn't even know what I was going through at the time but just recommended it to me and I was like okay and told me what it was how they work and what they do so I went in there I made an appointment the appointment was free and um, you get a little uh, needle stick and, and they take a little blood sample and it, when they say blood sample they take a couple drops of your blood they put it on a slide and then they magnify it and put it on a TV where you can see your live blood bounce around and do things and you see all the cells in there which is really fascinating so the blood test I believe was like 60 65 bucks something like that for the first one for the initial visit then when you could do follow-up um, visits it's like 35 I believe you know, you might, whenever you're watching this video, you might need to check um, and see. And then, you know, maybe they do this near wherever you live in the world, in the states, in the world, in the country, wherever you are. But anyway, this is something that is available. This is something that um, I was uh, um, able to do. And um, so it was interesting. So they show all the different little cells and they're all very distinct little cells. You can see your little red blood cells. You can see your white blood cells. You can see your white blood cells like eating, like Pac-Man, like <laughs> And they'd be like eating the candida things. And so there'd be candida in there. And you could see what uric acid crystals look like and different things like that. Well, one of the things was that they, you could see that the, um, there were candida cells that were running around in the bloodstream. They're not really supposed to be in the bloodstream. That means they've escaped the intestines. So again, I'm still in the phases of learning. I'm always learning about this topic. But um, this happened several years ago, and it actually happened before that, but I didn't know what it was before that. Um, but it is, uh, for me personally, it's a stress-related um, thing. So it, stress really brings it out in me. And a lot of people think stress is a negative thing, you know, and yes, there can be negative factors that accumulate for stress, but also, um, just things that are intense in your life. So the, the first time that this came about was when I was planning for, um, uh, we were planning for our wedding. So it was nine months of um, 
intense planning. So not to say that I didn't like planning for our really, really awesome, amazing wedding. Many people said it was the most awesome thing, awesome wedding they'd ever been to, which was a high, beautiful compliment. We had lots of cool things at it. But anyway, I had these patches. I had like patch underneath here and it was uh, scaly and itchy. I tried all kinds of stuff on it. I even tried um, Phoenix Tears um, as well and, you know, and uh, a lot of different things. I don't think I had tried hydrocortisone then somebody had recommended um, tea tree oil. I put tea tree oil on it and it burned like a living <laughs> oh that hurt like heck. So um, you know anyway I did try I, I, I am careful to say that I you know you know when people use a blanket statement and say I tried everything. Probably not because if you still have the issue, you haven't figured it out or solved it yet, or at least you know try to you know get to how to how to do that. So anyway, um, I did try many many options of what I could find out and try and did that. Anyway, the green herb was really handy and helpful because they showed me what my blood was. They gave me some specific herbs, and um, I don't have the bottles in front of me now. They're regular things like you know, they're, but they're combinations. So there are combinations like garlic and, oh, there's a whole bunch of different things, lots and lots of different things. And they, depending on what's found in your particular blood, they recommend what's, what to take. But it's not about taking the herbs. That will help fast track getting rid of the candida and getting it down to a normal level. So we all have candida in our intestines and we have a healthy biome or healthy bacteria in our intestinal tract. So in our intestinal tract, you know, this is some of the stuff that I've learned. So it's pretty fascinating to me, you know, hopefully, I don't know if it's useful information to you, but um, it, the, there's a lot of things that happen in the intestines that I wasn't even aware of, like a lot of hormone production gets done there. They call the intestines the second brain because of all the other brain, the other functions of the body that the intestines have the first, you know, how to, how to get it done and, and how, you know, so whatever you're eating really, really matters. So, um, I am a really big proponent of, uh, food as nutrition, not only as nutrition, but food as medicine. And there's a lot of people out there that, you know, speak on this issue, the whole food revolution. There's actually a thing called the food revolution out there. Uh, they do some summit and they have a lot of really amazing speakers and stuff like that. And a lot of it's a plant-based diet. But one of the main things is getting sugar out of your diet. So sugar comes in a lot of formats. So sugar, why you need to get sugar out of your diet is because sugar feeds candida. And candida is the overgrowth of it in the uh, overgrowth of yeast so that's simplifying it quite a bit but anyway sugar feeds it basically so also sugar um, hinders your immune system and j just depletes it so like my body my white blood cells are working overtime trying to you know munch at this stuff when if other parasites come in they're going to have a harder time working on that so like I got two colds this year and I was like, why? I never get colds anymore. You know, I just, I don't do the flu shots. You know, I don't do any of that stuff. I actually just keep myself healthy with a lot of foods, you know, try and do rest as best as possible. I, I know I can definitely do better on that, but, um, you know, and rest is a really big key component of keeping your body a, um, the stress down and the cortisol levels down as well. So, and also if you have weight issues at all, where if you seem, you feel like you're overweight, um, not my place to judge or anything like that, but um, getting enough sleep helps the cortisol level. So it's, it's been proven that people that don't get enough sleep have even more weight issues or if you're trying to get rid of the weight and doing, you know, diet and exercise, if you're not hitting that sleep component, that's a big key factor. Anyway, so a lot of the nutritional changes that I had to do were um, extreme and drastic at first. And so, um, and then as I kind of got out of the habit of doing the, um, in, in, the interesting thing is, it's all about eating really good, really, really, really clean and really good. So a lot of veggies, a lot of veggies. And um, at first, no sugar. So at, at least no processed sugar and not even fruit. So um, for instance, the fruits that are okay for me to begin with are lemons and limes. Oh, yay. And then eventually you can add in some berries and then, you know, you can 
add back thing. So you start with basically kind of like an elimination diet, um, but it's specific to this particular stuff. So um, no yeasts, no molds, um, vinegars are off limits. So it makes it very challenging to change up the habits on this. So a lot of these things feed the yeast and you know, you can like leave those things in the diet, but you won't get rid of this stuff as fast. So I was um, at wit's end when I first went through this stuff and um, I like literally spent three months like indoors, pretty much not going out and I was very miserable and um, it was around the holidays and it was not fun. Um, not the first time, but the second time I went through this, I again, didn't know what it was until I got it diagnosed. And once I got it diagnosed, I went gluten-free on Thanksgiving and sugar-free on Christmas. <laughs> Not the greatest times to do that, but I was really, really highly motivated. So if you're ever up for change, and I've talked about this before, but um, I'll reiterate, you know, it's just like, what's your pain point? You know, if, if you are highly motivated, I had a big reason. I didn't want to itch all of my skin off. And, and when I say itchy, I itched scabs that um, left scarring, so that's how bad it was. So it wasn't fun, it wasn't pleasant, it wasn't pretty, um, it was annoying. My husband would just say, stop itching, and I'd be like, I, I, I can't. You know, it just it's like somebody pouring itch goo over you or something. I don't know what how to describe it, but people, I've run in a few people that have had this before, and it turns out it's very common when I was looking at um, I think it was a book called, uh, da, 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 what was it, Candida for Dummies or something like that. Anyway, um, a lot of the stuff manifests itself in other things, and that's the thing that was really fascinating to me. So there was a list of like 300 major ailments, you know, from like high blood pressure, um, just, you know, a lot of different things. Uh, you know, psoriasis and eczema were one of the one of the th two of the 300 and so um you know but there were a lot of things um sluggishness lethargicness um fog brain fog is one of them so like dairy cheese these things um are also things that can you know help uh, to to promote that stuff so um trying to get off of all of those was really 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 challenging but again i was highly motivated hey stay up brown no Kelly, no. Anyway, uh, sorry, the doggies are trying to get, get back in again. And um, so anyway, uh, again, I've been going through this again because I kind of fell off of the wagon. And, you know, over the holidays uh, last year was getting more and more sugar in my diet. And, you know, candies were okay. And, you know, pastas were back on the, you know, thing and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I know better. I know that juicing really helps me. I know that... Um, reducing my sugar intake and of course processed foods and I don't do a lot of processed foods anyway I make I don't do a lot of home cooking but I am an Italian and I love my pasta so um, but I did you know part of this change is kind of expensive when you have to like go through your kitchen and redo things and the biggest thing you have to redo is your mindset so trying to get into the habits of uh, cooking with different things so there's a lot of things that I could substitute out turns out um, I was still eating fabulous foods. Some of them were a little bit more expensive um, to get things right. Um, so for sweets, I could do like stevia, not sugar. So like a little bit of stevia. Um, and uh, you, there's things you learn to work with like coconut and cocoa powder. So you could do cocoa powder and almond butter. Um, you, can, you can't do peanuts because peanuts are uh, mold, uh, no mushrooms, they're a mold, and so those uh, help promote, you know, bad things staying in the system. So again, you can eventually get to the point where you can incorporate those things back in, but um, at the beginning you want to literally, that elimination diet is, um, you know, and I hate calling things diet. Hey, no, stay. Callie, stay. So, um, but... The, this particular thing isn't about losing weight, although uh, an interesting thing about it, when you eat a lot of vegetables and you start putting good foods in your diet and giving your body a lot of really good nutrition, wonderful things start to happen. So, and dropping weight is one of them. So that was one of my happy occurrences the first time I went through this. I was like, ha, ah, I like 
just brilliantly lost 10 pounds, you know, and it, uh, 10 pounds on me is a lot. So I fluctuate a little bit, but anyway, you know, again, weight is not an issue for me. It's not like something that I focus on. And, um, part of the love the skin you're in, the theme for tonight is about loving whatever skin you're in. Now I'm literally talking about the, the, the physical skin of the, the biggest organ of your body is your skin. So taking care of it, so the recommendations for today, you know, of course, taking care of it internally and, you know, having a good diet. Um, and, and when I say good diet, I mean healthy lifestyle. So, I mean, like, the instead of calling it a diet and doing it on a temporary basis, but doing it as a lifestyle change. So a, a maintenance program that you basically incorporate new lifestyle habits. And so more vegetables, less sugar, um, eating whole stuff. So eating less processed stuff. Stop eating the white stuff of like, you know, white flour, white, uh, you know, and any of the processed stuff. And one interesting thing I learned was um, a lot of the things, if you're going gluten-free, um, with the gluten, um, gluten-free things, they put in a lot of other sugar substitutes. So like tapioca flour, rice flour, things like that. You have to be very careful with those because those convert and they break down into sugars that are um, that help feed the system. So you want to be careful with those if you're dealing with trying to lower your sugar levels. So um, be careful with your gluten-free stuff. Um, and also another reason to be careful with the gluten-free stuff that I heard recently is because a lot of the gluten-free stuff uses rice. You want to um, be care be be conscious of how much of that you're intaking because there's uh, uh, arsenic in rice, naturally occurring arsenic. But when you're doing gluten-free and you're layering, layering, and layering, you can be getting higher levels of that stuff in. So just keep an eye on that. Be careful if you're, you know, these dietary concerns are uh, of an issue to you. And, you know, maybe they're not right now, but they could be in the future, so be aware of that. So we have lots of doggies barking because... I. Do believe hus husband is home now so everybody's going to be making noise in the background alrighty so we uh, so eat your veggies uh, juicing is really fabulous um, one of the things to try and be aware of is when you're juicing um, be careful with doing too much too many fruits within a juice because when you're doing just fruit juices you are stripping the fiber content out better to just eat your whole fruit like an orange like an apple or what have you because you get the fiber content in there you don't get all the those really delicious you know those really essential nutrients that you do get from juicing the high concentration of nutrients but also you don't get the the sugars and when I mean juicing I do mean taking your whole things and ju throwing them in a juicer or you can use like a ninja or a blender or something of that nature and you that's what I prefer is because you um, get the the body of the fiber within what you're what you're doing so in other words like you know doing carrot juice is great but there's more sugar content in carrot juice than in you know eating a whole carrot because you get the fiber so um, that's nature you know basically just bet on nature because nature does it right to begin with so like nature puts a carrot together for a reason so there's sugar in it but there's fiber to balance it out if how it gets processed so um, you know pay attention there so um, yeah, I wanted to just go over some of that, of that being healthy, it, be loving the skin that you're in. So also another a metaphorical thing about loving the skin you're in is just understanding and um, just really uh, appreciating who you are and the being, the vessel that, that you have. So I'm going to try and close this door one more time and see if that works. It doesn't quite close because I've got little things on it, but... Anyway, um, trying to make it a little quieter in here. So uh, anyway, that a couple of things that have helped me love the skin that I'm in as uh, belly dancing was one of them, and then hooping is another one. So with belly dancing, you come to accept the body type that you have. A lot of my belly dancer friends are all shapes, sizes, ages, beliefs, you know, the spectrum of different things. Hey, stay up. Yeah. So, let's see if this is 
can go on for a little while. Anyway, so uh, try to keep this the show on time here. So, but uh, if you have the the chance to do any belly dancing or study it. Uh, there, it's really it's a beautiful thing, and it's a lot of people think it's about like wearing skimpy outfits and um, women dancing in front of men. Not the case. It actually started out. It was women dancing for women. Hey, stay out. No, back up. Out, 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 out. So um, anyway, apologies for all the interruptions there. So uh, that was Shiva. She's just giving me the eyes like, why can't I come in? I'm not disturbing you like everybody else is. I just want a peaceful place to lay down, which um, that would be good, except that everybody's going to follow her in. So, and the other two are not so peaceful. They'll be like, ah, anyway. So, um, so the belly dance is a really neat thing. So it was women dancing for women and just a celebration of the feminine. And um, it was beautiful and all that stuff so uh, a lot of people think of cabaret dancing um, so cabaret style uh, as opposed to like tribal style there's many styles of belly dance and coming originating from many countries um, and then there's fusion versions and stuff like that so you're, you know there's a huge realm of belly dancing out there but the cabaret style is like a lot of what people iconically think of with the coins and um, more skimpy outfits with uh, possibly a belly dance bra and like skirts that, you know, maybe seem revealing, maybe high cut or whatever the case may be. But the interesting thing about it is that belly dancers with their movements and undulations and shimmies and all, all kinds of things like that, um, you just learn how to love just the body that you've been given. And I've seen so many stories on how people have come to belly dancing from a lot of different traumas that they've experienced in the, their lives, whether it being assaulted, being something happened to them in their childhood, um, a whole host of things, eating disorders, you know, um, confidence issues, all kinds of things. So, and when I talk about belly dancing in this way, I'm also talking about hooping as well. So there are just as many stories out there of hoopers who, and everybody has their own very interesting story of how they came to this beautiful thing that they love to do as a, as a physical and mental activity to do. So, um, you know, it's, it's a neat thing. So interestingly enough, you may start out with body confidence issue, image issues. And, um, the, but sometimes you just, as those things start falling away as you get more comfortable with the dancing and realize that it's it's about the internal and what you put into it then um your clothing options may change and that actually happened to me you know for i literally didn't wear skirts for like 20 years and my mom passed away and she had a whole collection of mini skirts and i was like what the heck am i gonna do with mini skirts i haven't worn a skirt or a dress or anything like that for 20 years so um but that's I think that's about when I started getting into hooping. Um, well, actually, let's see here. I've been hooping 10 years now. Somebody added it up the other day because I said, oh, I've been, I've been hooping since 2008. And they said, that's 10 years. And I was like, it is now. So anyway, that was news to me. <laughs> anyway, um, which means I've been belly dancing for a lot longer than that, too. So anyway, um, the... the the hooping has been um, a total exploration of, uh, you know, interestingly enough, the hoop becomes this prop that people are looking at the prop instead of you and focusing on you dancing, although you look beautiful hooping within the hoop. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, might not feel comfortable out in public hooping, but you don't realize that they're not necessarily, they're just, they're fascinated because it is a beautiful thing. So, and also they might not be able to do it. So please, I, I implore you to go out there, try it and uh, give it a shot. Uh, hooping is a wonderful thing. On that note, I want to sc scoot over to the hooping segment, which um, I wanted to, the part of the um, hooping in your, your skin and being comfortable. I'm gonna just get up and start hooping. Oh, by the way, yeah. 
started doing these t-shirts on the back of my chair and uh, this is to be your own superhero so uh, on, I would like you to try and remember that that you are your own superhero okay now with that we're going to move the superhero thing out of the way and start hooping and let's see here do I have hoop that is ready to go let's see if this one will work in this office options here. Let's see. Okay. Well, what I wanted to show you is work on waist hooping or core, core hooping because you want to get and explore some of this inner and outer space. So two hooping names that I think you should be familiar with if you aren't already, um, please look them up. One is Anne Humphreys and the other is Anna Hoopalicious, Anna Bert Rickenbach. So she's considered like, I think I've heard her called like the godmother of hooping and like modern hooping of how we know it now. Uh, she's been hooping, if I've been hooping 10 years, she's like 20, 25 years, I don't even know. I, I, I'm sure she knows. Um, but anyway, she is a lovely, lovely person. And um, also Anne Humphrey is also very lovely of hoop, hoop and circle, hoop line and circle, I believe. So anyway, and uh, Anne Humphreys, I'm going to give a little shout out to her too because she's doing a um, core workshop coming up. Um, it's actually coming through Denver in June, so I'm very excited about that. And um, but so uh, she really, you know, explores inner and outer space. So what I'm talking about with that. And she has a way, her style is unique in how she does it and how she presents it. But my interpretation of, you know, inner and outer space, um, based on what I think of hooping, you know, and all of us are a little bit different. But exploring inner space is the inner part of the hooping. And exploring outer space is the outer part of hooping. So exploring some of these things... I like the core hooping because I think it fits in with this theme about feeling comfortable in your skin because it just, it literally, it hits a lot of acupressure points, points on your body and just makes you feel good. Okay, so you might wonder why you're smiling while you're hooping. Um, when you're dropping it, just let it go down to the ground. Part of hooping is dropping the hoop. So, and do try and hoop in both directions too. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing breaks where I, I get the hoop going in the other direction. I am turning with the hoop too so that I slow the hoop down to its slowest movement point so that I have more time to execute the moves and explore that space. So moving around, moving around, moving around. And I have a little tutorial video about doing this move here. So. I think I have it up on Instagram. I'll uh, shall put it up on the YouTube uh, when I get a chance. So I have so many tutorials. Anyway, <laughs> and so many dogs that want to come in. <laughs> One is just a visitor. The other two are ours. Anyway, um, hey, quit it. Stay out. And they're friendly. That's I gotta give them that. Anyway, um. So, yes, getting that inner and outer space going. And then I will let you know that I do teach classes in the Denver Lakewood area in Colorado. So if you are local, uh, I do workshops. And I can also work with you either online or in person in private sessions as well. So, and this week we are working on rolls, not just for dinner anymore. So what do I mean by rolls? those things. So uh, getting front rolls, back rolls. See if I can get a back roll without, yay! I did it without destroying everything in my office with a little bit bigger hoop. And um, there's all kinds of rolls. One of my favorites is a uh, foot roll, foot to chest hooping. I love this move. I could do it on one side pretty well. And then, let, okay, let's see if I can <laughs> demonstrate in my office. Whoa. That's sort of it. <laughs> anyway, um, I just rearranged my office too, so I have the maximum amount of space in here, but still a fairly small space. So, uh, 
lot. That's why we work on small space hooping and some of the things, too. So, anyway, I just wanted to let you know about some of these different things and give you some hooping and humor. So, I'm going to leave you with a, um, let's see here. Did I go over all of the topic things that, um, okay. Oh, the mind thing. The mind part of the doing these changes. So, we're talking about the loves the skin you're in. When you're doing these changes, make a better choice each time. So, I'm going to continue hooping while we're doing it. So, when you make a better choice each time, you, um, it, it's not such an overwhelming, daunting process. I guess I'm going to stop hooping because apparently I can't focus on too many things at one time. So, focus, focus, focus. So, that's one of my goals this year is to focus better on things. And uh, that candida cleanse um, really helps with that because it does help with the brain fog. So getting the sugar out of the diet, at least uh, even temporarily, really helps. So what was the So yeah, make a better choice each time. So like for instance, um, you know, the budget may not allow you to go out and redo your entire kitchen with everything you want to get. Um, but, you know, and if you have things that you need to move along first and then um, each new thing that you need to replace try and get a better better thing for each time so for instance maybe you get i should have brought this in um uh do 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 the bragg's amino acids i will um it, that's a great um so like for instance like if you can't do soy or can't do fermented stuff uh bragg's amino acids are really great um i don't think it has soy but anyway, it's um, it's enzymatic and it really helps your system and it tastes fabulous. So you can put it on popcorn, you can put it in veggies, you can put it on anything. It's fair, it's uh, it has a naturally occurring salty flavor, and um, as I've mentioned before, you don't have to worry about salt if you're just adding it to you know if you're not doing prepared foods. I heard this really interesting fact this week that um, our salt intake is. 95% of it, I don't know if this is accurate because, again, I haven't researched this one out myself, but 95% of our salt intake, let's call it 90, um, is from processed foods. So it's um, the salt in there that is used as a, salt, as a food preservative and also as a flavoring, but mainly as a food preservative, um, is uh, overwhelming. You look at a can of soup and you have like your daily salt intake from a, a can of soup. So um, you have to really uh, keep an eye on those things. But if you're making things from scratch, so if you make your own soup and you salt it, and one of the tricks that I use is to put the salt in at the end, and then you get the most bang for your buck. So the, so the sodium doesn't just cook in there and make this like flavor. It, it's very vibrant. So if you put it in or salt your food like at the table, and it's much better and then you don't have to worry about how much salt you're you're eating because again you're not eat, if you're if you're not eating processed food then you can salt you know you can eat like any you know splurge and get the good salt and um so like getting the those better choices for instance i started becoming kind of like a little uh, salt connoisseur and one of my favorite salts is black lava salt and that uh, again i should have grabbed some of these things to uh, show you these things but um, the black lava sea salt, uh, uh, black lava salt is really good. Uh, Himalayan pink sea salt is really good. Himalayan, Himalayan pink salt. And then, um, of course, sea salt. And then, um, kosher salt is really fun. And I've heard this interesting fact about kosher salt of one of the reasons why we really like kosher salt is because they're bigger granules of, um, and they're very, um, they have a lot of crystals on them, so a lot of like sharp edge surfaces. So our taste buds hit it, and it like really lights up our taste buds. Um, but and I remember I when I heard it in the context of like why we eat more kosher salt, and you know anyway, uh, just little tidbits of knowledge for what it's worth. So. I wanted to end with one more uh, humor exercise, and that is, well, it's a laughter yoga exercise. And it, and it goes with our Love the Skin You're In. And this is a little song, and you can do whatever version of the song you want. But what you're doing, and it's it can be confidence building. Um, it's good to do, you know, if <laughs> I don't know if that you necessarily want to do this one out in public, but <laughs> you can if you like. <laughs> 
but you just you can tap yourself you can tap various parts of your body and just gently you're not like beating yourself up but you're just tapping and you're appreciating yourself and you can sing if you like one of the uh, things that you can do in laughter yoga is uh, singing dancing playing um, those are different aspects of laughter yoga which is a real thing uh, I am a certified laughter yoga um, leader so um, this one is not my particular exercise but I like using this particular exercise I do have some of my own which is like giggling baby and um, I've come I've created some other unusual ones too so um, when I do laughter yoga workshops I like to throw my own in because they're fun and oh man we did one that was just a half an hour workshop and everybody was so tired afterwards because they had laughed so hard so and it's a fake it till you make it laugh too so this one's not necessarily about laughing as much but if you want to laugh while you do it that's fine just make sure it's not a self uh, like a derogatory self uh, de deprivation de not deprivation uh, uh, you're not being derogatory to yourself so you're not you're not pulling yourself down by this so but what you're doing is you're tapping and you can sing I love myself I love myself and you can go over like different body parts and like I love my head I love my head I love my ears I love my eyes I love my nose I love my face I love my throat I love my heart I love my chest I love my belly I love my arms you know and you can just go through and do that and tap along I love my toes, even in the shoes. <laughs> There's an interesting thing I heard recently too. Um, you see, you learn things every day, and so, uh, but that a lot of us wear shoes, right? And they have rubber soles on the bottom. And one of the interesting things about that is it um, prevents us from grounding with the earth. So we get energy, They're everything, everything is energy. And um, when we put the barrier of the shoes on, that uh, it prevents us from grounding and getting the energy from earth, from the, from the elements and stuff like that. So um, they, they make earth mats and different things like that. And so I was thinking, well, what about a yoga mat? Because people go to a yoga class and then they're on a rubber surface. So they're not grounding while we're doing that. So I don't know the answers to all of these things. Again, that's a new topic that I'm looking into. And... Um, so that's a fun one about grounding. But anyway, if you get the chance to take your shoes off, get your toes naked, take the socks off, you know, stand on some grass or stand on, you know, just nice surfaces. You know, if you have the luxury of going into a lake or an ocean or a stream, you know, and when I say going into, you, you can even just dangle your feet in. So you don't have to like go swimming in it necessarily, but just, you know, walking along the beach, walking along sand or you know gravel you know whatever you're, you're I have tender feet so I can't walk too much on the rocky surfaces but anyway grounding is the point of that connecting with nature so that's another um, thing so <laughs> I just like throwing in all these things that I'm learning and uh, sharing them with you so hopefully you appreciate that okay have another sip of tea and uh, oh yes and that tea the, here's, uh, let's see here, I recommended the Bragg's Amino Acid, the uh, Black Lava Sea Salt, which is really awesome. And then one of the remedies that was given to me um, as uh, for the Candida, so it wasn't all about just selling the herbs and stuff like that, but they, they said the easiest tea that you can make is you take a, clo a, a stick of cinnamon and cloves, like 10 to 15 um, whole cloves, and you put you put them in, run the boiling water over them. I seep them, so I uh, my coffee maker is actually a tea maker, and I don't do coffee, so I just run my tea in the in the in the pot. So I don't even put it in the basket, so I don't have to clean it out like that. But I just stick the the tea stuff in there. So you can do the clove, cinnamon, and then they actually do like the juice of a lemon. But I don't I personally don't do the lemon juice in the tea because it makes it taste weird to me I do lemon juice in other ways so for instance I made my own lemonade today with um, chia seeds and um, I put chia seeds and then put some hot water in there and let those plump up and you can do some really fun mm -hmm. things with chia and they're very nutritious and uh, do, 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 what else lemon juice and I think I put a few drops of stevia in there. 
um, just for a little bit of sweet, but, and of course water, and a nice good water. So I made my own like chia seed lemonade. Um, and I'm not even a lemonade fan. My, my husband's a huge lemonade fan. Um, I don't think he liked this one because uh, of the chia seeds. But anyway, he loves a good lemonade. But the, the tea is really good. Uh, the cinnamon stick, clove, and you could do lemon in there. Like I said, I do my lemon separately. Um, and also, I like drinking the lemon separately and then rinsing my mouth out because I was having some teeth issues where my teeth were a little oversensitive because I was having too much, too much lemon juice. And another friend has suggested to, you know, watch that. And so I do less lemon juice doing that or I rinse my mouth out. So anyway, for whatever that's worth, hopefully that helps. Cheers, everybody. That's good. So, and that's good, hot or cold. So, and um, obviously that's an herbal remedy, so it's non-caffeinated. So, you know, you can put green tea in there if you want. I actually put that in with a lot of different types of teas, another tea bag in, and it's very delicious. So that one was easy to do, and that helps um, combat the candida. And um, it, first of all, it's tasty. The, you know, herbs are really great remedies for other things in the body as well. So, alrighty, so we did the fountain laughter yoga exercise to begin with, the breathing in, fountain laughter out, ha 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 and then um, we did the, uh, also the, the new laughter yoga ex exercise this week was the I love myself, I love myself, I love my arms, I love my arms, and you know, you can do this however you like, and just pat through the body, and you know, and just, just, and it can obviously be over the clothes and stuff like that, you can do this with other people uh, get your kids to do this it's fun um, and and after the laughter yoga exercises remember that we take our hands together we take them together two big claps and go very good very good yay and do that twice very good very good yay so uh, that's a shout out and an honor to dr. Kataria who started laughter yoga and uh, let's see here yeah that's everything that I have for you today. I keep trying to get this into a half an hour show and I keep going around 45 minutes or so. Anyway, um, but I'm trying to get the timing better and uh, do everything a little bit better. So each time is an improvement. So if you have topics that you'd like me to cover in the future or would like to be interviewed, uh, let me know. I am Shay Rippinger at Hip the Hoopla. I am Hip the Hoopla pretty much all, all the places online. So H-I-P-T-H-E-H-O-O-P-L-A. Uh, that's me. And um, my logo and all that kind of good stuff. I'm so proud of my logo. My logo, I th I've showed this before, but my logo is a cartoon character that I have been drawing for, well, let's see here. I was drawing her for like 20 plus years and um, I've probably t taken like 10 year cartooning break, uh, but so I guess I've been a cartoonist for 30 years. But anyway, got dusted off the pens and, and worked on her. I, I, look, I even have her in a sticker and, uh, and all that kind of good stuff. So, and uh, yeah. All right, well, I hope, look, hopefully you've enjoyed uh, this time with the Hoop Love Y'all show with me, Shay Ripager. Just sharing some knowledge and hopefully advice that might, you know, it, it's things that I do for myself. Again, I'm not a medical professional, so do consult whoever your medical professional is before you do any of these changes. Um, use your brain and your common sense. You live in your body 24-7, so don't let anybody else tell you, you know, th it's this, it's that, it's that. You know, of course you can ex experiment, but, you know, I mean, like, if you sat and watched commercials all the time, you would think you had every single disease by all the drug commercials out there. So um, I say ask your doctor with a grain of salt because I don't go ask my doctor about a lot of things because um, I, you know, that's that's a whole other long discussion for another time. But anyway, there's <laughs> so many things to talk about. Alrighty, well, it's been fun hooping and have so having health tips, humor, and hooping with you. So enjoy and again go look up um, Anna Hoopalicious and Ann Humphreys because they're awesome hoopers and Ann Humphreys is doing a whole tour where she's doing core on the body hooping 
and um, it's going to be a really awesome workshop and she's coming you know uh, touring in the United States so and you can f find both of their you know their videos they do lots of videos online so they're wonderful people to follow so thank you so much for following me I am Shay Rippinger of Hip to Hoopla I have lots of tutorials out there as well they're free and if you want to work with me either in person or online I'd be happy to do that with you I'm also getting some online courses up and going and I'm so excited about it. One of them is building confidence in your hooping. So I'm very excited to get that one up. And also I just shot some videos for the um, d delicious rolls course. So not just for dinner anymore. So I love coming up with fun titles because I'm silly that way. So uh, anyway, all right, this has been Shay Rupert of Hip the Hoopla. Rock on, peace out. And if you have any questions, uh, ask them below. Try and keep the discussion nice and light and polite um, because we want to keep this in a positive thing. So um, I, not into the, the negative commentary. Um, I understand there are things for discussion. If you have different points of view, of course, that's, you know, understandable. So um, anyway, take anything that you can use from this and use it in your own life and maybe it might help one person out there. So maybe you don't have to go through some of the, the issues that I've gone through. Um, you know, obviously we each have our own issues to deal with, but sometimes when you learn from others, it's way better than going having to go through it and beat your head up against that wall too. So you have other walls you can beat your head up against. So anyway, <laughs> keeping it real, keeping it funny. That's me. All right. Rock on. Peace out. Bye.